So, okay, cool. Charles, take it away. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We are Cloud Native at Scale, a community focusing on CNCF and rising cloud native projects. Um, I'm today's host, Charles, software engineer at PinCap. Today, we, were, we are super excited to have Shannon and Darren from a Acron Labs give us a talk introducing Acron Framework, a new open source project that aims to simplify building and running application on Kubernetes. Um, Shannon and Darren are also known as the founder and the CTO of the Rancher Lab and the initiators of many influential cloud native projects like K3S and Rancher. I personally am a big fan of Rancher and K3S. So as soon as I heard the Rancher team was starting a new project, Acrom, I tried out and it really impressed me. I think most of you are like me, have years of experience of using Kubernetes and are quite comfortable with writing YAML file to describe the runtime environment for application. But trust me, not everyone enjoy writing YAML. Many of my friends who are backend engineer or data scientist just don't know how to make it right. And a misconfigured YAML file can often lead to on-call tickets for the DevOps teams. So there is a, still a very big gap between application de development and application deployment. In the next, we will have Shannon and Darren to show us how Aquan can help us to fill out this gap. Okay, Shannon, it's all yours. Thanks, Charles. Great, uh, great overview and intro. And thanks everyone for joining us today. It's uh, it's fantastic to be with you guys and to participate in this community. I am, um, you know, as Charles said, Darren and I have been working together for a long time. Um, you know, with my one of my my very first startup, Darren was a customer of ours when he was a. Uh, the chief architect over at GoDaddy, and, and we became good friends, and, and really, since then, have have jumped at every chance to work together. Um, you know, Darren is is the chief architect at Acorn Labs, and really the the you know visionary behind everything we build. I mean, he you know from Rancher to K3S at Rancher um, to you know the work on Acorn, it really comes from Darren's mind, and and you know I, I sort of am. Kind of classic person that sort of finds really smart people and holds on to their coattails as long as possible. So I, I've been lucky to be working with Darren a long time. It's um it's great to be here today. We're really excited to tell you about Acorn. Acorn is um it's a it's a new project. It's a new company. It's it's really a fresh start for us. You know, we spent eight years building up Rancher, and and uh, you know at the beginning of the pandemic, Rancher was acquired by Sousa, and the team really is other than Darren and and I and a few others. Almost everyone's still there working really hard on Rancher, working on K3S, working on those things. But, um, you know, for Darren and I and, and our, you know, our other co-founder, Shang and Will, the, the opportunity to get back to kind of the very beginning and working on that software again was really hard to pass up. I think we, we really love this part of the journey, the feeling out new areas and seeing if we can come up with something that's both impactful and, and could be the basis for actually building a successful business. Um, and we're really excited about Acorn. I think Acorn is, gives us, uh, you know, an opportunity to look at an area that's really naturally um, uh, layered above the work we've done on Rancher and K3S and all the projects we worked on at the operations and platform level for, you know, making Kubernetes really easy to run anywhere. And that kind of stems from, you know, the the reality of Kubernetes right now, right? Kubernetes is just uh, you know, it's there's no slowing it down. It is on an amazing um, growth path, and its growth has, you know, really validated a lot of things. I think a lot of us hoped back in 2013, 2014, when Docker first came out into the market, and we saw Docker for the first time. Uh, you know, there was this potential for uh, a piece of technology to sort of unify computing across the clouds, across the data center, across the edge, and those two technologies, the, the container, Docker itself, and Kubernetes, the orchestrator of those containers, have, um, have proven to be really great pieces of technology, very stable, very powerful, uh, very flexible. And it's their growth and their, you know, that has, has really put, given us so many amazing opportunities to build software. And so with Acorn, we're kind of looking at how to continue sort of bringing more and more and more organizations and teams and people to the journey um, and how to solve some of the problems that are emerging as we head into kind of Kubernetes 2.0, as Kubernetes is now the default way to get infrastructure in the cloud and the default way to run infrastructure in the data center. Um, 
you know, and we have great management tools. Now it's kind of moving to a phase where it's, you know, the real question is, okay, well, how do we make this easier and how do we expose it to more people? And how do we make that, um, that journey something that we can, we can start to, uh, you know, simplify. And so for us, that naturally led us to looking at the application uh, layer, the application definition, the application deployment, the application lifecycle. And one of the areas we, we, as a team that worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies running Kubernetes in the cloud and on the data center and on the edge, dealt with was the vast majority of operational problems in Kubernetes came from deployment issues, right? you know, applications that were deployed and deployed in poor ways, or, you know, didn't follow best practices, or were just being deployed by people who didn't understand Kubernetes and, and were, were dealing with it wrong. And that led to a lot of difficulty doing upgrades, a lot of difficulty in noisy neighbor problems and all of sorts of issues that were common in Kubernetes management. And so when we looked at it, we, we saw, kind of saw this really glaring hole in the Kubernetes ecosystem. And it, and it really was in the application definition area. You know, if you look at, you know, definition of, of Kubernetes, it's usually done in Helm or YAML, right? You, you define your application and it's very, um, it's really powerful because it's wildly flexible. You literally have 100% of Kubernetes capabilities exposed to anyone who uses Helm, anyone who wants to talk to the API. I mean, Kubernetes is an open book and you can constrain that with policies like OPA and things that would control what people do, but there is nothing that kind of lays the groundwork. And so what we found and we talked to all of our customers and users and people that were in the community around Rancher was they spent a ton of time building things like Helm templates and training teams on how to define their applications and how to do this well. And we really thought that there could be a better way there, that there's an opportunity to build a different type of application package that just coded in those best practices and made it really easy. In fact, that ease of use was really a driving goal of Acorns. We wanted to look and see if we could build an application you know, layer that um, created an artifact was by multi-container by, uh, by, by, uh, by architecture and then made it way easier for people to describe. And at the same time, enforced all those best practices that we knew people should be following when they were creating Kubernetes applications. And of course, we knew this needed to be open source, needed to be something that the whole industry could get behind if it was useful and if people liked it. So we started a project, we created Acorn. Um, we're working really closely with all the large cloud providers and a lot of the ecosystem to kind of define what this project looks like. But already it's getting enormous amounts of interest and, and kind of been stunned because people have been searching for something that just makes Acorn, makes it, uh, Kubernetes easier to use. So Acorn is, is really influenced enormously by Docker and Docker Compose. It is, um, you know, it takes the sort of Docker model of using a, a file to define an image and then building an image that can then be deployed. So when you're building an Acorn uh, deployment or an Acorn file, you're basically describing your application. And it's really application level constructs. We're, we're really avoiding any of the sort of infrastructure level things. So, so you won't be dealing with um, privileged containers. You won't be dealing with deploying, you know, kind of da daemon sets to your whole uh, environment. This is meant to be um, really designed by uh, to describe the application. And so you'll describe all the containers, you'll describe all the configuration, you'll define the secrets and, you know, the networking policies and how you want to expose your service. Um, and what's great is it's built to cover every use case from stateful to stateless apps, apps that use external databases to ones that deploy databases uh, and apps that change their, their configuration as they move from environment to environment. So if you're moving from a local development up to a test environment, up to production, you know, you might be working with a lot of different imp implementations. So we really try to bring all the best practices there and implement it in the Acorn file. And that has been really kind of critical in, in getting people excited about this because it, it does reintroduce that Docker-like experience of just anybody with a real good understanding of what they're trying to do can describe an application. And then within the, the flow, they can use the Acorn CLI locally on the machine to take that Acorn file and generate an Acorn image. So you build your Acorn image and the Acorn image is really all the logic that's going into that file then created as an artifact. Um, and that artifact, can include the images or it can just link to the images that you're using to create the file. But the whole thing can be signed. It can go through GitOps. It can go through any process models and checks, workflows to say when it can be pushed and when it can be used. 
And all that can be pushed up to an OCI registry. So the image itself, when it's deployed there, fits really nicely into GitOps and CI CD flows. Um, and then you know you can instantiate that image and naturally pull all the related images that are connected in the manifest to the registry you're deploying from. And then when you're ready, you push it to Kubernetes. And what happens on that Kubernetes cluster is we have a, an operator called the Acorn Runtime, which takes those images, unpacks them, and deploys them on Kubernetes. So you know it looks kind of like this: the user will talk to the runtime operator, which is running in the in a system namespace on the cluster. And that then will unpack those Acorn images and, and create native Kubernetes deployments. So it can create the pods and deployments and networking connections and everything else to expose the applications that you're trying to deploy. And it naturally implements kind of namespace as a service. So as users create multiple apps and deploy multiple Acorns, they're connecting namespaces. They can You can connect to multiple Kubernetes clusters and deploy this to all your different Kubernetes environments from local to cloud and um, Anyone you know that you share the Acorn image with can instantiate it and recreate it. So it's meant to have that same workflow that you imagine with Docker container, but but expand it beyond a single container to cover the entire um, you know multi-container application space. So I'll stop there. Um, hopefully that gives you an idea of, of what we're doing, and um, and turn it over to Darren, and so that Darren can you know walk you through a demo and show you how Acorn works. All right, let me share my screen. Oops, you should let me move that out. All right, do you see a terminal there? I do. All right, okay, so I'm going to go through and um, I'm going to demo running an application with uh, Acorn, like go through all the steps, how Acorn works. The app that we're going to be building is this webhooks app which is a nice uh, sample application. You can actually use this to um, post webhooks to. And uh, so I'll show you how the app works when we actually get it running, whatever. But it's it's a nice uh, example because it has a bunch of different microservices and a, a backend that uses Mongo and, and things like that. So let's get started with Acorn. So Acorn is primarily presented um, to the user as a CLI. Um, under the hood, it follows a full Kubernetes architecture. So there is a proper Kubernetes API. And um, so if you are a Kubernetes guru and you want to get into the, under the hood, um, you can see how that all works. That's an operator and CRDs and custom API server and stuff. Um, but we wrap that all in this nice CLI and that's kind of our, prim our primary user experience. Um, for most people, the way you're going to install that, oops, that's just kill Slack. <laughs> Um, so the, the primary way you're going to install that for most people is going to be um, Brew. Uh, we have that for, our, for Mac and uh, Linux, um, but we also have Scoop for Windows. There's a curl version, or you can just go directly to our GitHub page and download the binary. But it's just a single binary. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, once, you have, once you download it, just run Acorn install. Um, we need a cluster. You know, We need a Kubernetes cluster to run on. If you're just trying this out, uh, Docker Desktop or Rancher Desktop are kind of the easiest ones to get going with. They just pretty much work out of the box. If you're going with uh, Minikube or Kind or K3D or or um, a lot of other desktop, there's there's docs on how to get those ones running. Um, because we we need Acorn fundamentally needs three things: we need a storage, we need ingress, and we need a service load balancer. So making sure those components work on your clusters sometimes unfortunately a chore but to get acorn installed this is basically run acorn install we kind of go through check that you have all the stuff that you need i already had it installed on this cluster so that went super fast normal installation only takes like 15 seconds um but so i'm going to walk through a basic flow like the basic flow of building and running an acorn application um, so in this directory here, I've got this app. I've already kind of cloned all the source. Um, this is, if, you know, this right now, this uh, sample that I'm running, like all the source for this is available uh, in my GitHub. Uh, I built the cloud, uh, I think it's webhook demo. Um, this is all up here. If you want to actually fool around with this demo. Darren, Darren, go ahead and, and drop that link in the chat there. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do, do. 
there you go. There's a link. So that's that's where what I'm be working on today is actually up there. Um, but the actual source of the application is coming from this, from uh, you'll see in this clone script. Uh, that's where the actual upstream application, but I kind of cloned that down here. So um, so we have the application, the source, we have an Acorn file. I'm going to go through and I'll explain what's in this file afterwards. But basically, um, so once you have the Acorn file, we can go and we can build the application. So we're going to build it and I'm also going to tag it at the same time. As, you'll, as you see, you already know Docker. The syntax is pretty much exactly the same as Docker. But instead of building a Docker image, we're going to build a complete application that has multiple images. Um, so here I'm going to tag it. Uh, you do have to put the docker.io if you're going to use uh, um, Docker Hub. Um, and I'm just going to call this demo. So I'm going to go and build. I did build this beforehand. So this is kind of cached. So it's going to go super fast. Um, but this is building my application source. It's pulling in some other Docker images. I'll show you all that when I show you the Acorn file. But I've gone and I've built this application. So now I have this image. And I can go and run this image. So once I run it, it starts outputting status. Um, it's going to basically wait until the application is up and healthy before it kind of exits. Um, so here it's deploying all different components and telling me what's going on. There's about, I think, four or five more microservices in this. So you can see it's it's deploying. So it's saying, you know, six out of seven were healthy, but those ones are up to date. Now everything's healthy. So once I have the application up and running, you see it, it automatically, it gives me a URL. So I can click on that URL that pops open. And now I have this app up and running. Okay. So I can click on this app. Um, this is, let me see, how is this thing? Oops, enter your token. Let's see, wait, how does this work? I don't think that's what I normally do. Let me click on the, get my webhook. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is this gives you like a little URL. And when you go, I think, to dashboard now, you can copy this command here. And if I just run this command over and over again, you can see it's hosting webhook payloads to here. So like this is so you can test out webhooks. Um, and it's persistent uh, in MongoDB. So it's like I refresh, the, the state comes back. OK, so I got this little this application up and running. So I built the image. I'm running the image, I get a URL, I can automatically do this, uh, or I can automatically use this. Um, once you have that, you can then go and you can push, push that image out to an OCI repository. Um, again, I kind of already did this, sorry, did this, uh, push this, so that went super fast. Um, but you'll notice the size of this, it's 300 and some megabytes. Um, so the reason for that is this is this Docker and this image that I just pushed, it includes all the dependent images. And that's not done through like copying data. It's actually done through like references to other OCI content. So we don't like pull all the Docker images and copy them. And um, it's actually just references to the existing images. Um, but you can see that kind of the, the entire included size of this application is you know, 300 some megabytes. So once I've pushed this, uh, you know, I've pushed this image out, I can now go to any other uh, Kubernetes cluster where, you know, I just run a porn install on the other cluster. Um, like I can just switch to a different, you know, cube config if I had, uh, you know, um, let's see if I have something else. You know, I'm not going to do that. That's our shared development environment. But like, so if I switch that other one, then I can just deploy that application there. So it's like, building and running applications. The idea of Acorn is like kind of building and running applications on Kubernetes should basically be as simple as building and running containers in Docker. Um, okay, so what I just did in that, there's a lot going on. So now I'm gonna kind of go to the next level deeper, explain like what really just kind of happened in those couple steps that I just did that. Okay, so first let's go through the Acorn file. So you understand, you know, actually what's in this application that I just built. You can see there's a couple top level sections here. Um, okay, before I go into the sections, the syntax of this, this is kind of like our own our own markup language that um, if you're familiar with Q, HCL, or JSON it, um, it's kind of takes a lot of inspiration from a lot of those. Um, different ones, but but basically it kind of starts with adjacent syntax and then adds 
you know, uh, um, adds a lot of niceties, um, like ifs, like conditions and loops and references and interpolation and things. Um, the, but anything that's valid JSON is going to be val valid. Um, we call this AML, Acorn Markup Language. So, any, so it starts with JSON, but then, you know, it's like you don't need quotes on a lot of the keys. You can put comments in there and, and whatnot. Uh, this the the whole doc the whole language is all in our docs. You can find that at docs.acorn.io. Uh, I'll put that link right here. Docs.acorn.io. If you want to uh, find our find our docs. But anyway, so from the top level, um, we've got basically we've got the args, containers. Keep going down here. We've got a router, um, and then we got jobs. Um, those are the things I have in this sample application. Um, other things that you can kind of put at a top level are secrets or volumes. And, and I think that's basically it. There's also profiles, but that's kind of an advanced feature. So within this application, um, what args are is when, in order to um, customize the application per deployment, you can add arguments to the application. So for this one, there's just one arg, which is run tests. Um, so when I go and um, I run this, let me see the, if I do dash dash help, this will print out what are the arguments that are available for this application. So what I can do is I can run this and I can actually say, okay, run tests. When I do that, it's gonna run the, the integration test suite that's part of this application. Okay. But you can add you know, whatever parameters you want. So this is the, the nice thing about this, um, um, this language is is it's kind of fully dynamic. You can do conditions and loops and whatnot. So based on the arguments, you can change a lot of a lot of the behavior of the application. Okay, so in here we define the containers, um, and kind of the the if you're a Kubernetes expert, you know all the low level details. Um, each one of these blocks, like API or WS. Um, each one of these is going to correspond basically to a deployment and they are running in pods. Like Acorn under the hood, we're just creating kind of standard Kubernetes resources. Um, but we do call it containers because like kind of the nomenclature um, is much easier for people to understand than pods. But things like sidecars are um, still possible. You can just say sidecar, who, uh, you know, whatever. You, you can uh, put in... So it's like we have this full power of pods, um, but we, you know, it just kind of don't require you to know that right up front. But you can see within this first, first one, this first API service, uh, we start off here and we say build, okay? So this is, we're actually gonna build the image for this application in line, and we're pulling it from this subdirectory um, uh, dot forward slash, okay? And then here's the condition of if we're running in development mode, we actually want the dev Docker file, not um, the default one. So there's a, there's a whole idea of, of development mode. And so let me kind of show you that, what that means. Um, so with, if I would, let's say I wanted to change something in this application, well, what I would do is I would go, and so I already have this app running here. If I was to do kind of like the normal, you know, uh, like the flow that I just show you, then basically you would build a new image, okay? So I'll call it like E or whatever. So I build that. Uh, do, 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 do. Give that a second. And now that I have that new image, then I would just say update image. Um, we're gonna update it to be E image. Uh, and then give the name of the application, which was Divine Star. Okay, so that would be like your flow of like, I wanna make a change, I build, I update it. Okay, for development, that's gonna be super slow. Okay, so that's not like, that's not a very fast development loop. loop. So instead what I can do um, is I can say acorn run dash dash dev, uh, and then just say the current directory. And what this will do, is this is gonna build and run the application. So it builds it and then it starts running it, but you can see it like automatically starts outputting the logs of the application. So this is very similar to a, like a Docker Compose upflow. So now this application is running in a development mode. 
Uh, so any change that I make now, uh, if I make, let's say I go and, um, you know, I, I'm just gonna add a line here. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. And I write this file. It detected that that file changed and it's gonna redeploy the application. So it's automatically watching like the Acorn file and the Docker files. Uh, and so, but as I mentioned before, this is also since when you run in a dev mode, we set this, this argument for dev, it's gonna use the dev Docker file, not the regular one. So like if I look at that, um, so the, like this is the regular Docker file here. Um, and then if I look at the, the development one, you can see this is setting the Flask environment variables and it's running it through Flask as opposed to this one here is running it through G Unicorn or I don't know how you say that, but anyways, the um <clears throat> so it's running in two different two different modes. Um and so also you can see here with this dev is it's syncing over forward slash app. Um it's creating this, it has this directory. And, and what this is saying is the directory forward slash app within the application, I want that to have everything that's in dot API. So if I go into the dot API directory here um, and I change, you know, something, uh, you know, uh, let's see, not, not there, uh, I don't know, doesn't really matter. Just anything, I'm just gonna add, add a line. So just so you, so you can see, okay. This automatically, you can see it, oops. This uploaded that file, um, you know, uh, Flask itself detected the file was changed and it reloaded. Okay, so you can use Acorn as a full, you know, to do your complete development. Um, and so that's what the, the developer mode is. Um, um, so yeah. Darren, here are some of the questions. Oh sure, yeah. 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 So one of the one of the audience asked if Acorn app can they fetch the logs and can add a debug container in the future. Okay. Um, so let me see. So you can get the logs. Um, so like in terms of just like normal debugging stuff. So we have logs. So you can get logs of containers, and then you can also do exec. And there's a really nice feature with exec where it's like okay. So if I do Acorn um, exec, uh, let's see, it, it, uh, I, um, I think cold C is the development one. Um, so here, let's see, run swag. You know, so now I'm in this container. But mm -hmm. um, a common thing that you run into is uh, um, from scratch, like the front, uh, like if you have an application that's from, from scratch. So instead, what I can do is, um, if I list the containers, let's say I want to get into Mongo, Cold C, you know, I want to get into this container here. I can say exec and uh, I forget the exact argument. Oh yeah, it's debug image, debug image. Um, so this is going to create an ephemeral. And so I can say, well, I just want to run um, Ubuntu. And so now it's running Ubuntu in the same context. And I believe it mounts in, like, yeah, it mounts in the same volumes and stuff. If there was any volumes in there, I wonder if I, awesome. I might be making that up. If we don't do it, then I want to do it. Let me kind of double check. Let's look look at Mongo. This Mongo should have a volume mounted in. Okay, yeah, that's that's really impressive. I didn't know that Acron come up with this reach command line tools. Like we can list all these running containers and access some of them and create a new container. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And it's so the idea is um and there's also like there, there's a little mm -hmm. thing here where you can just say like don't even target anything and just say like um because if you build an image like um you can just say uh just run the debug image not against anything it's just like I want to run an Alpine container just so I can fool around and test things out like this is just running an Alpine container within its own context um so that helps for just debugging other crap but um. But the idea with Acorn and the CLI is we really want, um, it's like we want to give the full power of Kubernetes, but also mm -hmm. abstract it. And I, I know it's a very difficult, it's a very fine line to, to, to do of like, how do you abstract something without losing all the power of it? But it's like, I think we can, I think with Acorn, we're accomplishing that. And so, so the idea is with Acorn is like, you can hopefully, uh, we want to get it to the point where you can just live within Acorn for most of your application lifecycle. 
of you know running, developing, troubleshooting uh, applications, uh, you know, kind of live within Acorn yeah. and not have to get down into a lot of the guts of Kubernetes itself. Um, but if you are a Kubernetes expert, then you know you can get into the lower level stuff, and it, and it should make a lot of sense. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, oh, we have a many we have many questions coming, oh, yeah, but yeah, I think we'll leave, we'll yeah. leave it to the end of this demo, right? We have still have some oh, okay. other things we want to show, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so let me see. Um, so this, like, I'm just mostly kind of talking through like various features mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, I really don't mind if people stop uh, and ask questions um, because I'm just going to walk through so most of the rest of the demo. I'll just kind of walk through this Acorn file and just kind of talk about the different things that we're doing here. Um, <clears throat> so here you can see we have a probe. Um, this is like a short, nice syntax, but there's a more like longer, complicated syntax where you can do like um, readiness, um, or there's there's a couple different uh, syntaxes, and so you can do like exec, uh, you know, bin foo. Uh, this is all documented where the different things, but basically all the different probe capabilities of like readiness, live liveliness, and startup, you can do all those regular probes. Um, what we do do by default is if you don't define any probe whatsoever, but you do have a port defined, uh, we'll automatically set up one uh, for you just because that's just, you know, it's basically just a TCP probe. Like once that port's open, then we say it's, then it's ready. Uh, if you want to disable that uh, behavior, well, what you can actually do is, uh, um, oops, oh yeah, down here. If you want to disable the behavior, you can just say, no, I don't want any probes. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so uh, let me talk a little bit about the ports and the networking. So in Acorn, all the networking kind of routes and stuff is all explicit. You have to define, like if I go and I say there's no ports on this, then it's going to make this container like not addressable, not accessible. The idea is like, you know, this is an early alpha project, but we very much designed this um, from the perspective that we should be able to enforce all of the networking constructs through a lower layer, layer like service mesh or or um, like um, network policy, uh, you know, or Calco, you know, those type of policies. Because we know, you know, all the containers, what ports they're exposing, who's allowed to talk to them. There's um, higher level concepts that I won't get into in this demo of basically linking applications to other applications. Like that's how you're going to do like um, if you have multiple Acorn applications running, you can expose and consume services across them, or you can um, expose a service that's kind of outside of the kind of Acorn universe, like just a Kubernetes service or an external thing. So, but anyways, but everything's explicit. Um, so it's like, we know all that. So if you want this application to be able to, uh, for things to be able to talk to it, then you have to define a port. So this, port, oops, I didn't mean to do that. That port there, port 5000, like that has to be open because if I go all the way down here to this routers, I have one router that's just called default. This is the name of, I just called the name of it, it was default. And you can see this one route here for port slash WH that goes to API 5000. Like these three go to the API. So if I did not define um, 5000 here, that route would effectively fail. Uh, Okay, um, so uh, okay, so going through here, we can see also we have depends on. So this is just kind of startup order. This is startup and update order. Um, so it's like basically we're not going to start this uh, or update this uh, component until Nats and Mongo are are up to date and happy. Um, okay, let's see if there's any other important things. So if you notice, like, so this one here, we're actually building the, the Docker image, but this one, uh, you know, we're just referencing in an external image. But when we build the Acorn, like actually build the Acorn file or whatever, we pull in all of the references. Like we pull in everything and then we reference everything by digest. Like you can actually see that if I, if I um, look at, okay, so I have these images here. I can take one of these images and say acorn images containers. Um, and you can say, okay, within this acorn image, these are actually all of the container images 
that are being used. So for like, you know, for these services, I've just gone over like the API and the WS or Mongo. These are the actual digests inside that are being used. And so you can actually, you should be able to kind of pull these digests and reference, and it's going to be the same digest of like whatever MongoDB 4.4 is for that architecture. Um, it's a little hard because of the manifest list. You have to kind of dig through, but eventually it's going to resolve to the exact same reference. Um, uh, the, yeah. One little nice thing about this command too is you can do um, dash Q, and then you can basically pipe these things to something like Trivi. You can just, and you can scan, you know, so you can still scan all the individual container images uh, that are inside of there. So I think I have a, um, one of the audience ask a question highly relevant to current topic. So um, he wanted to know where does the image store locally before pushing it to a remote registry? Mm, yeah. So, yeah. So, so um, here, I'll, I'll just pull up canines and, and kind of show you the kind of the guts, what's going on. So we actually were running this build kit pod. And if I go into this build kit, mm, let's see, yes. Um, if I go in here, we're running two components within the cluster. This is just for development. You do not need this in a production setting, but for development, when you're building and pushing images, we are running a build kit in a registry within the cluster. Okay. Um, so again, for production, you don't need that because production, you're just gonna be pulling images from like an OCI repository, um, but we do need those. Right now, this is unfortunately running um, privileged, but we are gonna to switch to a rootless method um to make sure that you know the security of that is um, it, okay. it's better but yeah okay that's so that's that's where it's running right now okay that's interesting i thought we we need to have some local container runtime like docker docker d or something then we can store the image locally temporarily and then push it to the registry but we actually have it on the cluster yeah that's really cool yeah, so there's some magic going on here. So you'll see, like, if I actually look at the lower level Kubernetes, what's going on. So if I look at, um, let's see, this pod here. Uh, yeah, so you can see the image is actually pointing to this, like, um, 127001. You know, so this is, again, this is development mode. If it was, mm -hmm. if it was not development, you would just see a regular, like, reference to, like, you know, Docker.io or GCR, GC, you know, whatever. Um, but here for development, so we're actually, we're running a registry on a local node port, and then we kind of loop back through there. Got it, got it, okay. Uh, so, okay. So are you, do you, do you have some time for some more questions? Yeah, yeah, I love, okay. yeah. I yeah, it. so we have many questions coming, but some of them are like engineering question, and some of them is uh, something high level design question. So I will go through the engineering question first. Okay. So the first one is like, is it possible to create pods with multiple containers in it? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So that um, you can do. Uh, I wonder if I have. I might have a more complicated. I think this one might have sidecars in it. Okay, yeah. So here's a more complicated one. Um, this is Jenkins. So this is running like the full Jenkins uh, setup. This is actually a really cool Acorn. This is again. Uh, uh, it's just something I threw together. I'll, I'll put a link to it. Um, it's just a demo I put together. Uh, this one's kind of super advanced, and so the more DevOpsy people can kind of like uh, uh, appreciate what's going on in this one. But so you can see, I have this one. Um, sorry, let me go up here. I have this one container, Jenkins, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's pretty advanced. There's a lot of crap in here, but you can see there's sidecars. There's a sidecar here, and this one. Um, so the sidecars is how you define additional containers within the pod. And then also you can see if you put a knit true, then it's de actually defined as an init container, not just a regular container. So when you define containers here, this basically is just kind of the first container in the container list. And then when you do sidecars, that creates other containers uh, in, the, uh, you know, in, in the list of containers. So yeah, so that's possible. Got it, got it. Another question is about monitoring. So do you have any comments on the Acron monitor for the health of apps? You know, so we're working on that. So we started, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things we're adding to Acorn and whatnot. And so uh, we will come up with uh, basically some patterns around, it's pretty much just kind of standardizing the Prometheus metric stuff of, uh, you know, how to um, expose what we want to basically do with an Acorn is just, um, being able to 
easily define what is kind of like the metrics port and path for your applications. So that metadata is available to easily be scraped from, from Prometheus. But mm -hmm. the idea is right now, uh, make it easy to integrate into people's existing Prometheus setup. Like we probably are not gonna build, like put Prometheus itself into Acorn. That's kind of too fat of a thing. Um, but we will make the kind of the monitoring best practices kind of like a first class thing within Acorn, but that's still in progress. We've done Got some it. experimentation. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So during a demo, we saw a lot of like Docker. So the uh, audience wanted to know, is Acorn compatible with other container runtime? Like yes. Like container D or CRIO? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so again, you know, this is an early alpha project for, for, for you know, just starting off a fairly small team. So we haven't tested all the millions of permutations, but the idea is we work at a Kubernetes layer. So we, um, we are not, uh, we have no direct tie-in to Docker right now. So it's like, that's why like we're running our own build kit and our own registries. Like we don't make any assumptions that you have Docker. Um, you just need Kubernetes. Um, so as far as we know, everything should work. We've had reports that OpenShift, as long as you uh, you know configure the RBAC stuff right, um, seems to work fine, and that's running on Cryo. Um, but most of the deployments, you know, the users and stuff are running on Container D. But but anyways, but mm -hmm. we we try to conform to just a Kubernetes uh, standard. Uh, right now, we need Kubernetes 123. The only reason why we need 123 is for ephemeral containers. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't use the ephemeral container support, then like I think 121 or 122 is fine. Also, got it. Got it. Okay. So um, another question is about the deploying process. So it looks a little bit different from the another popular um, deploying process, the GitOps. So do you have okay. any comments on that? Like what's the difference between using GitOps and using the Acron to deploy the application? Okay, so we're extremely friendly with GitOps. Um, let me show you what a GitOps flow is gonna look like because you know at, at Acorn, we use this to run all of our production services and we're doing everything GitOps and Flux in production. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of, you know, so what I'm doing right now, like doing running, like just Acorn run, this is a very user-friendly approach, but obviously within, you know, GitOps is the best standard or best, best practices right now and exist. And if you already have existing um, Kubernetes infrastructure, you're probably, gravitating towards that approach already. So basically it's extremely simple if you wanna do a GitOps flow. So what it is, is um, what I've shown you so far has been um, just you type Acorn run. And Acorn run has a bunch of different parameters. Like I can't, I won't be able to get into all of them, but like uh, things around controlling like the uh, secrets and volumes and linking other applications and whatnot. So all you basically do is, um, so when I ran this, uh, this application said acorn run like this. Um, and let's say like, I, I'm just gonna put an argument just so you see, you just do dash o yaml. Okay. That spits out basically the CRD, um, just check this into GitOps and then you're done. Okay, so then if you wanna do an update, you know, you just edit that file, change that to the next version and then GitOps will deploy it. So. This is following, this is, so the nice thing is that like the CLI gives you this right nice Docker experience, but under the hood, this is like full-blown Kubernetes architecture. So it integrates extremely well into the existing ecosystem. Um, like if you get into, let's say secrets, because there's a lot of things that are like, how do I manage secrets? Mm -hmm. um, and so Acorn is doing, um, we kind of do, we'll do secrets management, like in our next version, 03, you'll, we'll have native encrypted secrets and like, um, to do like a kind of like a like SOPS kind of approach where you can check in an encrypted value and to get and stuff. Um, we'll be doing that, but like, but that's not even a required. If you already have an existing solution for secrets, um, we integrate directly into regular Kubernetes secrets. So like we integrate nicely into the ecosystem already. So there's, there's a lot of things. It's like we're, we're trying to be as compatible as possible with everything that's already out there. Okay, got it. Wow, there are so many questions coming. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there's another question uh, another question about Dapper. Yeah, I, I like Dapper yeah. as well. So if she wanted to, he or she wanted to know, have you ever considered integrating a Chrome with Dapper as a sidecar that provides developer API for writing applications? So um, we're talking about this one, right? Dapper, this project? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Um, so as far as so as far as I know about Dapper, so I don't I don't know exactly where the integration would be because like as far as I know about Dapper is like Dapper actually provides higher level uh, APIs to abstract out like store and PubSub and stuff like that. So I I honestly don't know how we would integrate. Mm -hmm. If there's a logical place where we can integrate, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But um, because like to us, Dapper is working at like one level higher. Like we're still just dealing with containers. Dapper is actual APIs and application framework. Yeah, agree. Yeah, um, agree. So I, I don't, I really, I just don't know enough yeah. know how we would integrate. But yeah. if there's something logical, then we would love yeah. to. Yeah. So far, what what I what I saw what I see is I think Acrom is generic enough. So I think if we wanted to integrate Dapper into the Acrom, it can be just created as a regular containers, and it can still function pretty well. Yeah. On top of the Acrom. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> just so, great. I'd just, love to see it. I'd love to see it because I know because I I know that's a that's a fairly popular project. The amount of like GitHub stars and stuff. Um, Absolutely. We actually have Mark. Mark, I've uh, enabled you to be able to talk if you would like to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go, I, go for can, it. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, yeah, my name is Mark Fussell. I'm one of the maintainers on the Dapper project. Um, and I love what you're doing with Acorn, by the way. It looks amazing. Yes. Um, Dapper is a sidecar that runs that allows developers to have just these high level APIs that allow them to do common design patterns. And so I think there's a great synergy here that you can have where you can run Dapper as a sidecar image. Uh, against uh, the uh, images that you uh, images that you run here, so I'd love to work with you on this and find out a way of creating a demo with you. Yeah, I would love that. That'd be great. Not really, yeah. but all right. Great. Awesome. Um, Thanks, Mark. And another question is about API servers. So, can you brief about how the API servers aggregated with Acrom? Um, what is the main reason? Okay. Um, I mean, I was talking about the kind of the internal Kubernetes API server stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's, there's, there's two things that we're doing. Um, so first, if we look at um, CRDs, um, Acorn just has right now one CRD, but this is part of the internal API group. So like we actually, users are not supposed to use this. This is kind of internal to, to Acorn. Um, but the main, uh, the main API is an API service, oops, Acorn. Um, so this is the main API, which is running a custom API server. And so the reason why we did a custom API server is basically it gives us two things because it's like, it, it was extremely important that like one, we want the user experience and like the simplicity of like, so we're kind of opinionated. We want the API to be a certain way. Um, but we also wanted this to be um, still completely compatible with the Kubernetes ecosystem. So we did a custom API server for main, two main reasons so that we can use sub resources and we can do streaming. Um, because in order for me to provide like exec and logs functions like that, I need streaming. And then I need sub resources to kind of do a bunch of other things that don't fit into a nice little CRUD pattern. Um, and so uh, the, um, the other thing that was very important to us is the RBAC model is Acorn is designed such in a way that you can have a user that has only access to our API group. You don't need access to um, the core API resources. Got it. Mm -hmm. So, so Acorn API provides a complete, um, hopefully, you know, there's probably, you know, not, you know, probably doesn't completely work, but the idea is that, that the Acorn API provides a complete abstraction so that within the, you can just live within the Acorn world and see everything. Um, so yeah, so we needed a fairly rich API that's just far too complicated or cumbersome to do with CRDs and webhooks. Got it. Okay. And another reason we have an aggregated API server is because the security, right? You just mentioned because yeah. user you don't want to use it to touch the base Kubernetes API yeah. server. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. So. Um, could you show the dashboard for monitoring Acron components and the applications? We, I mean, so we don't- You're working on it? Yeah, we don't have anything like, like okay. that now. We do have, uh, yeah. So we're working on kind of the, like a UI side of Acorn, mm -hmm. um, but that's, you'll see in the coming months. Uh, right yeah. now, everything's just kind of a CLI. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and we, I think we have a large question here. I think yeah. we have a big question. It's about design philosophy. So looks like the Acrom hide the complexity of the Kubernetes from the end users, right? 
but we also maybe lose some flexible flexibility. Mm -hmm. So what's the trade-off? Do you have some comments on this, like more simplicity or more flexibility? What, what do you think about this trade-off? Yeah, so the idea is that like we try to present this in a simple fashion, but we don't really want to um, kind of remove all of the like all of the power and flexibility of Kubernetes, which is extremely difficult. But but the so the thing is, is we do narrow this down to application. So, you know, like so certain things like privileged containers, we're not going to be running CNI drivers, we're not going to be doing daemon sets. So there's some things we'll just say, no, it's not in the scope of APAR. So that does actually remove a lot of things. Um, but kind of the major design philosophy of Acorn that's kind of different is, is um, I mean, it's not different, is it's like, we basically, we, we basically, like, like my design philosophy is typically like the complexity of, let's say like the Acorn file or of Acorn should grow with the complexity of your application. So if you have a simple application, it should be simple to get going. So we don't require you to know a lot of concepts and stuff up front, but as you get further into uh, you know, more complex deployments, there's a lot more functionality that we have in there. So it's just, a lot of it is just how we design the user experience. So we're really not trying to like, because people come and they're like, hey, I want this feature, this Kubernetes. And it's like, yes, we do want to add all these things. We don't see that like we want to like remove all that, but it's like, but it's done in a way that you, you're you kind of not, like you only really need that until it's advanced. So it's like, so you can see that in the fact mm -hmm. that like, we don't talk about pods up front because honestly that kind of like, I don't, don't it's like, you don't need to know pods and services and, and whatnot, um, you know, up front. But so, so there, there is, it's like this fine line of, of walking of like trying to make it simple, but not removing all the, the power and flexibility. And so it's, the only thing I can say is that like, I think, you know, kind of like our take, you know, we've been doing this for a while. We've you know, been working in the Kubernetes ecosystem that we are addressing, you know, the concerns that we think are really important for the application mm -hmm. use case, which, which is really fundamental because you have to think about it. It's like Kubernetes is a platform that does absolutely anything. But when you narrow it down to just application, it's, it's a little different. And that's where like, sometimes we struggle with users coming in and looking at Acorn who are coming from a heavy DevOps and they're like, they're, um, they're deploying all the low level components and doing all this stuff. And it's like, well, a hundred percent of what you're doing is not going to transfer over to Acorn. That's not our intention. Yeah. Like, Agreed. You're, Agreed. Still, you're still going to do a lot of the raw power stuff in Kubernetes. So mm -hmm. we're really looking at the application side. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. It's always difficult to explain to some of my friends what is pods and what's the difference between pods and the containers. Yeah. They and really just wanted to run some containers on Kubernetes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I think a lot of people don't like, don't like when you, you know, after you've learned Kubernetes and you use for use it for a little bit, you kind of take for granted a lot of the knowledge that you have. You don't realize there's so many concepts that are really foreign to most people who are like, their objective is they wrote a Java app and they want to run it. Like, you know, there's, they just don't need to know all these things. So. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, another question about is about infrastructure as code. So, um, mm -hmm. will a Acron ever be able to integrate with some other in in infrastructure as code products like uh, Pulumi, things like that? Yes. Yeah, so, so, but I mean, so the thing is, is like, is Acorn itself is still presented as a Kubernetes API. Mm -hmm. So we do look at that as like Pulumi, Terraform, all those things can just integrate directly with Kubernetes. So it's like with the you know, a Kubernetes style API. So those things should already basically work. So as I showed kind of with the GitOps thing of like, we already have a Kubernetes uh, API, you can just integrate from the API level. And so it kind of automatically floods into the ecosystem. Got it, got it, yeah. Um, and during the demo, you mentioned that all these entries inside the containers uh, scope is, an, is a deployment, right? Mm -hmm. So what about stateful set? So some, sometimes maybe we need to have some to store, uh, to store the stateful application, to store the state of the st uh, stateful application. Well, how can we achieve that using Acron? Okay, so this one is where we do deviate a little bit. So it's like we've, um, uh, let me kind of see if I can advance topics, stateless, stateful applications. Okay, so what we typically do for stateful applications, because I don't even think stateful sets is like, 
it's uh, the problem with stateful applications is there's mm -hmm. no there's like no silver bullet for how to run them they're all different every single one has a different unique requirement on how it should be orchestrated and whatnot so the approach that we've taken is what we've found is um a very flexible simple pattern of basically if you want to define a, a stateful set like a stateful application then just create pretty much multiple instances um of, you know, so basically you're creating deployments of scale one. And the reason why you do that is if you look at like what's fundamentally different about a stateful set, the, so the, the very important thing about a stateful set is it gives a fixed identity to each container. Uh, and then it tries to orchestrate updating those, those things by doing partitions or, you know, whatnot. And, you know, there's various things you can fool around with. Mm -hmm. What we found is it's like, well, if I do... Um, kind of this loop. So what you're looking at here, this example is like four in this range of the number of replicas, mm -hmm. then you create instance, you know, so I'll end up with like instance zero, one, two, three, and each one of those will bind a volume and the volume itself is also volume, you know, one, two, three. Um, so this is dynamically creating more replicas. And so when you do that, it's like, well, now I have um, X number of things that have a unique identity. All the state is in a volume. The deployment is ephemeral. You can, it gives you a lot of flexibility mm -hmm. to because one of the other problems you run into a lot with clustered systems is the first node, like the first replica, is some mm -hmm. is, is special. Like how do you bootstrap it? Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's all this complicated logic and in, in, in operators and want to do all this or whatever, but we've been able to accomplish like a lot of these things. Um, I'll show you this is where um these are a bunch of these are things that we're just kind of fooling around with. These are not like production grade quite yet or anything. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like, like this Mariah DB one is, is an example of, um, it's like, this is an actual Galera cluster. And uh, mm -hmm. this has like recovery mode built into it and bootstrapping and all of these things. And so there's all this logic, you know, to how to bring up a system. So anyways, so this is our approach on how we've been doing stateful applications. It's been working pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't found a flaw in it yet, but I do, you know, admit that maybe we'll just find out that this is a terrible idea and we just should do stateful sets. Mm -hmm. But this is giving us a lot more flexibility than we've seen a, the, the, a, beyond what stateful sets allow you to do to just mm -hmm. deal with all these oddities of how pers persistent systems run. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, so I, we, yeah. Sorry, so it was, when we designed Acorn, mm -hmm. uh, we very much, we didn't want it to just, like we wanted to run absolutely mm -hmm. anything within the application space. So the first applications that we spent the most amount of time trying to run were all the persistent systems, like mm -hmm. RyDB, Zookeeper, Kafka, Redis, Mongo. We fooled around with those a lot um, to see if we could you know, support all those use cases. Got it, okay, okay. Um, another question is about, um, if how how can I debug Acron? If you know if I try to use Acron and some application or container just doesn't start on the Kubernetes, is there an easy way I can debug? Well, so the idea is, um, you know, we're trying to basically aggregate. Uh, da, 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 da. So the idea is. When you're looking at an application, when you list them, we try to aggregate all of the state into here, um, but you can just get the guts of what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. So if I say like dash o yaml and I grab this one, mm -hmm. um, there's tons of information about what's going on with all the various containers. Uh, and then you can get all that same information at a container level too. So this is kind of the equivalent of looking at like the deployment yaml or the pod yaml to debug. Mm -hmm. So we we try to bubble that all up into the native Kubernetes, I'm sorry, into the native Acorn API components. So if I you know look at this, this is gonna tell me uh, you know, whatever the status and what's going on mm -hmm. with it. Um, if that, you know, if really you can't uh, figure it out from what Acorn is bubbling up, mm -hmm. that you can go down to the actual application. So let me mention this. So like well, the way this works, um, uh, I can't remember if there was a slide on this or not. Um, when we deploy an app, so like right now I have two apps running. Mm -hmm. um, 
the apps get deployed in their own namespace. So we create a namespace dedicated to each application. We do that for two reasons. One is security. It's very easy to create like a secure boundary around a namespace. Mm -hmm. The second is to keep service discovery consistent. So no matter where you deploy this application, mm -hmm. the DNS names can always resolve. We can mm -hmm. manage the, what DNS is available mm -hmm. um, just through Kubernetes services and stuff. So if I go into this namespace, um, if I look at like deployments, mm -hmm. They're exactly like they're named what you would expect. Like if you understand Kubernetes, so it's like here's the deployments, you know, uh, oops, here's uh, here's the services, uh, you know, here's ingress. Like they're just regular stuff under the hood. It's not, you know, if you know Kubernetes, then this is just kind of normal stuff. Okay, so we mm -hmm. so we we tried to make it everything. I don't know. It's like not auto generated names, and it's kind of friendly because from the operation side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you no, know, for somebody who knows Kubernetes, they're running the operations. We want it to look like a regular Kubernetes deployment, not like this weird machine generated thing. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Cool. Um, so I have a question myself. So yeah. as a dev team, team members, if I am the people who is running a Chrome framework um, and I wanted to do something advanced, for example, I wanted to do the scheduling, uh, advanced scheduling feature, like node affinity, pod mm -hmm. and high affinity, things like that. Is that possible? If user creates some pods through the Acron, yeah. Yeah, so right now, so there's two glaring holes in um, Acorn right now, two features for like a production use cases. We don't currently have resource constraints or resource requests and scheduling capabilities. So like it doesn't exist right now, but it's coming very soon. We really, so um, so we'll have uh, full scheduling capabilities, but like what we didn't want to do, like what we were concerned is like, we didn't want to just straight copy the Kubernetes, you know, like labels and affinities and anti-affinities and topology keys and taints and, you know, or tolerations, like all mm -hmm. of those things. We didn't want to just shove that all into it. So um, we're, uh, we're kind of finalizing that, AP, like what that API user experience will look like, but it's coming very, very shortly because we know that's like an obvious missing thing for a production mm -hmm. use case is scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it's, it's not there, but it's, it's coming very soon. Got it. Got it. Okay. So yeah, I think I have go through all those questions we have so far. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, so I think mm -hmm. um, for the most part, I think we've kind of covered all the the random things. Um, I'm, I'll just throw this in there like super fast. Um, this demo, um, so I, I put the link to the in the in the chat of uh, uh, the webhook demo. It mm -hmm. also has some GitHub mm -hmm. workflows in it. Oh, sorry. And so, like to set up a CI/CD workflow is super easy. Um, okay. Again, Acorn is still an alpha software. So you'll see if you set up these for like, it'll be a little flaky. We're working through some bugs of getting some things to work more reliably. But mm -hmm. the idea is, um, so like we have two flows in here. One is for PRs and one is, one is for tags. Mm -hmm. So basically on, on PR, um, we have, uh, we are, we have some actions, GitHub actions already, um, from Acorn. So this will basically set up, um, make Acorn available. And in here, you can see you just basically, for this application, we build it and then, um, and then we run it and we run the tests. Um, so as long as this runs, then the PR succeeds. Then uh, on tag, you can see very simple here. Um, we uh, set up Acorn. We do a login to GHCR. Um, we set what we want the tag to be from the refs. And then here you can see we build the application and then we push the application. So that gives you like a full um, CI flow, like very nice CI flow. So then like, if you then hook this up to like um, Flux that does image watching, then you get a CD flow. Um, I did a, we did a meetup on this like a week or so ago. Um, mm -hmm. The demo epically failed. It was one of the worst demos I've ever had in my life. But like, but it is a, a you know, kind of sees where we're going in the complete, capabilities and how simple this can be when things do actually work right. <laughs> so. Cool. That's nice. yeah, mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's about it for kind of my demo. Um, you know, if there's any other questions or just kind of- I've got a few through. slides just on where you can get more information, Darren, if yeah. you let me kind of go back. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. 
just uh, as, Dave, as Darren was saying, you can find a lot of information on our docs. So if you just go to the docs.acorn.io, um, the getting started guide there is really good. It gives you a lot of places, uh, a lot of the key information. We're constantly maintaining that and updating it. So it's a great thing to share with people or to kind of tweet or post out there if you want to kind of help someone get educated on it. We also have a, um, obviously we have a GitHub uh, site. If, you know, we'd love uh, any input, any thoughts. A star is greatly appreciated. So uh, any anything you can do to uh, to kind of help though, we'd love it. It's an open source project that needs, you know, more participation. So um, please, if you're interested in getting involved, you know, join us there, put mm -hmm. in issues or help with the docs. The other thing is um, we have a, a Slack, uh, slack.acorn.io where we kind of talk about everything so if you you'd like to jump in and get any help if you should try using this and you find that it's difficult by all means um you know <laughs> join us there and let us know with that i think that's everything thank you guys darren thanks for the great demo today and uh, thank you charles and josh for hosting us absolutely and thank you to our audience i thought that was some great questions and yeah we'll be in touch there's People are really excited about this project. There's a lot of interest and uh, we would love to have you come back maybe on a quarterly basis to give us an update. Um, that would be great. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to love to stay in touch and definitely, um, you know, we're, we're going to be making some doing some uh, some work that we'll be introducing at KubeCon. So, uh, so keep an eye on the Twitter channel. And um, if you're at KubeCon, like I said, reach out. We'd love to see you there and, uh, you know, go uh, celebrate getting everyone back in person together. Shannon, you're having a party. So do we get an invite or what's... what's? what's yeah, I, I don't know the details yet. I just know <laughs> there's going to be a party. Somebody was organizing it and we, uh, <laughs> we're we one of the three or four companies participating. So uh, yeah, shoot me a tweet uh, or you know a DM and, uh, and I'll make sure if you're going to be there how to get you an invite or swing by our booth. I'm sure, I think it's like the first night too. So it's kind of early in the, in the event. So swing by and say hi. I'm sure we'd... Tell us you, you swung by one of our meetups and we definitely will hook you up with an invite to the party. Oh, very yes. cool. Didn't know you guys were going to have a booth. So that's good to yeah. know. We're going to uh, have a booth. We'll be giving away swag. So yeah, come by, say hi. And uh, yeah, we'd love to meet everyone. Awesome. Are um, just maybe, are you guys hiring right now? Um, where, where are you at with that? We are. We're hiring engineers. Um, so yeah, we're hiring engineers. Um, if you go to you know the website under the about us, you'll see how to submit a resume and just introduce yourself. We're not hiring a ton. You know, we've raised some money, so we're we're kind of rolling forward as a company. But you know, we kind of need to get the basics all in place uh, right now. So um, I think there we're probably I think we're up to about twelve people, thirteen people in the company. So uh, we are hiring, but we're not. Um, it's not like we're hiring sales and marketing and a lot of other things. It's mostly engineering right now. Got it. Got it. So if anybody's interested, definitely check that out. It's a rock start team here. So Charles, uh, did you have any last parting thoughts? Uh, I think it's a great talk. I really interesting Acrums, and I'm looking forward to talking talk with Shannon and Darren in KobeCon in person. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. And we'll send out the recording and the presentation hopefully tomorrow or the day after at the latest. So thanks, everybody, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Shan. Thanks, thanks for having us. Bye, okay. guys. Take care Bye. now. Bye. Peace.